so um, my name is Basil Burkhardt. I'm a student from Ghent University uh, in Flanders. I'm 22 years old and um, I'm studying economics. Right now I'm studying general economics as a master, master in globalization and international trade. I went to um, study at the Washington Center for a semester in DC because um, I'd been in America before. I went there when I was 16 to do um, the IB, two years of uh, high school. And um, that was a really amazing experience. Um, that time I went to New Mexico, so it's a very small environment, very small bubble. And um, when I got home and I enrolled at the University of Ghent, uh, I got a good education, but I really sort of wanted to get out again. So um, I took an Erasmus year in South Africa. And uh, I had a semester on my, on my hands, and I really wanted to do something useful with it. And I encountered this program in DC, which is called the Washington Center, where basically um, you get to do an internship for four months um, and also get academic credit for it because you get an academic course, you enroll in a program, you get to go to seminars. And really people, um, people at the Washington Center are very professionally oriented and they give you lots of career opportunities and it's a very interesting way to get some personal development. So um, I was able to go there on a scholarship of the Flemish community, which is fantastic. So you apply through your university first, then you go to applications for the Flemish community. Um, you go through some general interviews and recommendations of uh, teachers, professors, um, and then you get to, you get to go. Uh, you, you have to go and ask for an I-20, uh, sorry, J-1 visa. So J-1 visa to be an exchange student in the U.S. It's a fairly straightforward application. I had no troubles with it. You do have to make sure that you call in time, and when you call, you have to make sure that you have a credit card, which for Belgian people isn't all that, um, well, usual. So you do have to make sure you have the credit card because you'll be asked to pay with the credit card before you can make an appointment at the embassy. When that's done, usually your visa application is uh, over in about two weeks and you can go. So um, in order to get there, it's important that you choose your actual internship site. So when you apply to the Washington Center, they have a database of a whole lot of vacant internships where you can work, depending on your field of interest, which you indicate. Um, and that really is the main value added, I think, of this program is that they get a bunch of people together within the US, but also international. And they give you lots of different internship sites based on your interest. And together with your fellow students, you do all sorts of seminars. And obviously, you, you get to be um, on a social basis together. And they're really wonderful people. So as soon as you accept one of your internships, you'll get a couple of offers. And you'll do um, telephone calls, interview calls. Um, I did about four of them, and then after about usually a week or two weeks, you'll find out whether you've been accepted, then you have to make a choice for which company you'd like to work. Myself, I worked for this company called Manchester Trade, and they're an international um, trade consultancy, really. So they deal with issues of international trade, mostly government to private, but also just private. And you look at, um, well, I was working for the president, and I looked mainly at issues in sub-Saharan Africa dealing with um, U.S. legislation concerning trade with Africa, mainly the AGOA, so the African Growth and Opportunity Act uh, is going to expire in 2015, and we were looking at ways to follow that up and how to create a program that um, not only continues what AGOA has been doing, but also adds to that. So I think the, one of the best things of being in D.C. was getting that exposure, and you work, you work hard, you work in a full-time job in a very professional setting, and you gain a lot, I think, in, in both personal and professional development by getting used to how people function in an office environment. I think I've become a lot more confident working in an office environment, working with different characters of bosses, people who have different expectations of, of you, um, different professional ex expectations as well. And so, yes, I was, I was doing a lot of um, general office work, support. But I was also going with, with my colleague, a different um, intern actually from the University of Antwerp. We were going to lots of think tanks, lots of lectures, lots of seminars and events around DC, which is where all these things happen, of course. And then we got to write policy briefs or just summaries and send them through to our bosses and then look at, um, at writing statements for clients. Uh, it was a very interesting, very interesting job, a lot of exposure also to ambassadors um, in different African consulates and embassies, as well as, you know, some members of Congress that you go and um, solicit for some reason. It's very important that you're, that you're adaptable in, in sort of the 21st century labor market. And um, 
going to the US still sort of has an edge, I think, in terms of getting exposure that you wouldn't get in Europe. Um, you would be expected to do different things. It's very usual in the US, for example, to do an internship and not get paid. Um, that is entirely normal. People do it all the time because they need the experience. They just need to have it on their CV. Um, they need to have it as, um, as a way to get ahead, as a way to be competitive. It is a very competitive environment. And DC, I think in particular, has a lot to offer that um, Europe just has, hasn't. Um, there is not the same kind of the same kind of responsibilities that you can, can get as an intern um, in very serious settings and consultancy, think tanks, those kinds of things in DC really are a one-off in the world. You, you're not going to find those anywhere else. Um, I don't think in London, I don't think in Europe. Um, and I do think it, it's a real value added that you're able to move that far and really do something entirely different. Uh, if you're doing an internship or if you're a student, you're going to be very keen to see a bit of the, of the country. You're in D.C., you're in actually a wonderful part of the United States. You have Richmond, Virginia, you've got North Carolina not too far off. Um, New York's only four hours by bus, so I did get to travel quite a bit. My job was very flexible. They required me to work hard and sometimes work nights, but um, if I wanted a Friday off to take a long weekend to New York, that usually wasn't a problem. So I did that a, a couple of times. Um, I also had the added benefit of, of making a lot of new friends um, at both the Washington Center and friends that I'd made from before. And um, so I could travel very easily with them. The J-1 visa allows you to get to the States about 30 days before your internship starts and stay 30 days until after your internship finishes. So you have to make sure that you fall within those lines. It's quite hard to get your J-1 visa changed in any way after it's been made. Um, you can't, for instance, say, like, okay, now I'm going to be a tourist and I can stay another 90 days. They're not going to allow you to do that. But, um, you know, really, if you have a month before and a month after, you can travel quite a bit. And I did. I went on a big road trip from Vermont to North Carolina. I covered something like 3,000 miles. It was beautiful. Um, and I really loved it. So you really, you can see lots of, uh, the East Coast especially, but if you're willing to take a plane, you can go somewhere else. Dus als, um, als jullie iets speciaals willen doen en eraan denken om, uh, om naar het buitenland te gaan, Denk dan zeker na over de Verenigde Staten. Er is van alles te doen. Er is een beurs te krijgen van de Vlaamse overheid die ontzettend veel helpt. Um, je kan er van alles beleven en uh, het, het lijkt mij gewoon een fantastische ervaring voor uh, iedereen. Dus ga ervoor.